today I'm going to show you how to get some crispy fried fish without having to deep fry in oil. Now look, you, we, we know that we love the deep fried fish. Baby, that crunchy coating can't be beat. However, sometimes we got to cut back on that oil. Other times we ain't trying to get the house hot. All right, like it's about 100 degrees a day and I ain't going to get my house hot. Mm -mm. I'm going to show y'all how I'm going to get some crispy fried fish without having to deep fry in oil. Mm-hmm. And you're going to love it. Let's go ahead and get into it. For the fish, you can use any filet fish that you want. Today I'm using flounder, but some tilapia. Well, I know some of y'all not gonna use tilapia. I know, I know how black folks be. Y'all be like, tilapia not real fish. So don't use tilapia, okay? If you don't wanna use tilapia, okay? You can use some sway, you can use catfish, whatever white fish filet you like, even some halibut. I've also done this with some barramundi fish. I get that in fillets from Costco a lot. All of those will work. Of course, you wanna make sure that your fish is thoroughly deep thawed. Next, I'm gonna dry off the fish with a paper towel. I'm gonna do both sides because I'm gonna add a binder and I don't want this to be too wet. Be careful if you do use flounder. I feel like this is a really delicate fish and I personally don't want it to rip into pieces. So to be 100% honest, if I am not doing a lot of fish, I'm just gonna use a fish fry blend like Louisiana. Now this is high in salt, okay? I hear a lot of people say, you know, I don't know why you don't season your fish if you add fish fry. Do you see the sodium content? On this okay it's very hot so I don't tend to add anything but you can add whatever you want however I know some of y'all don't use this so I'm gonna show you how I make a fish fry mix fish fry is literally nothing but cornmeal flour and seasoning that is it all right but when you buy it from the bag they just pre-measure the seasoning for you so to make your own you're gonna add one cup of cornmeal with a fourth of a cup of self-rising flour. I like to use self-rising flour because it already has some baking powder in there, which helps you get a nice crispy coating as well. For my seasonings, I have lemon pepper, Creole seasoning, salt-free Cajun seasoning, a little bit of pepper. I have all of the information on that in the description box. And you can add additional salt if you want to but I'm using Creole seasoning, which is salt-based. However, the salt-free Cajun seasoning is just like cayenne pepper and things like that. So I'm gonna mix this up well, and you can save this in a Ziploc bag to use over and over again as a fish fry. One of the benefits of making your own fish fry is that you can control the salt. So if you're someone who's concerned about blood pressure or things like that, then this is a great thing to do or you can simply add no seasoning and then just season the fish itself the way you like. You can do whichever one you want. Now I'm gonna show you what the bag fish fry looks like. As you can see, they look fairly similar. This one's just a little bit lighter from the flour content, but this is pretty much just seasoned cornmeal. For the binder, now I already know some of y'all gonna have something to say. And that's all right, I'm ready for it, okay? Cause I'm gonna use some mayonnaise, mm -hmm, and I'm using a little bit of hot sauce. Now mayonnaise, you will not taste it. We are not using very much to be a binder on this fish, all right? But it will keep your fish very moist. Do not knock it until you try it. If you don't like mayonnaise, you can use mustard. All right, if you don't like either of those options, then you can beat an egg and use a little bit of hot sauce in it and let that be the binder, all right? But I'm using mayonnaise today because really, mayonnaise is just oil and egg emulsified. I'm gonna now put the binder on the fish. And honestly, I am not gonna measure this. I'm just gonna squeeze a little, ooh, that was almost too much. Okay, I'm just gonna put a little bit on. Okay, that's like a teaspoon and a half and a little bit of hot sauce. If you're doing a ton of fish, of course, you can pre-mix it. And I am just going to rub it in with my clean hands. I know some of y'all are going to be like, you touching your meat with raw hands. <laughs> Look, y'all, some of y'all be touching y'all meat at night with dirty hands. Okay, so don't even talk about me. All right, I wash my hands before I do my cooking. Okay, once I do one side, 
<laughs> I am going to flip it over carefully so I don't break it. And I'm going to add a tiny bit more mayo. Seriously, a small amount. Again, if you don't like mayo, use eggs, use mustard, use whatever it is you like. Since I am going to bread the fish with the homemade fish fry, I am going to add a little bit of seasoning to the fish very lightly. Okay. And y'all know I love me some MSG. Okay. This is usually sold as accent. And if you don't like it, I do not care. Okay. I do not care. Some of y'all will eat McDonald's every day and complain about MSG, which you got MSG all up in the foods. All right, but if you don't want to use it, don't use it. And again, very lightly. That's it. This is this fish is thin. Okay, I'm definitely not using all the fish rods, so I'm just gonna sprinkle some on a plate. I'm gonna start off with that much. It's probably about a little over a fourth of a cup. I'm gonna put one fish fillet on one at a time. Well, actually I can go ahead and do both. I'm just gonna grab the excess and sprinkle it over. Now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna flip them. The back side is coated well, but I'm gonna get any spots that were missed. And when you flip it, this is when this side should be able to get well coated. You don't need to go crazy with the amount of fish fry you use, especially if you're not doing that many fillets, which is another reason why I really like this technique for frying fish, because every time you make fish, you're not always cooking for a big crowd. Sometimes it's just you or you and your spouse or a friend. All right, the fillets are well coated. They should look just like this. If they're not well coated, they're not gonna be crispy. While we're not deep frying in oil, you still do need to use some oil to get the coating crispy. And I'm gonna use one of these oil sprayers. I don't suggest those pre-made oil mixes. They just don't come out the same way to me. All right, I think an oil sprayer is best. So I'm gonna show you how I feel this. It's super simple. There's a little um, opening here, and this is grapeseed oil. I'm just gonna slowly pour this in. I like to have this on my counter for when I'm cooking meats, just so I can marinate it easily, or even when I'm doing a salad. I'm going to just get up the little bit that I spread right here. I'm just gonna rub it in actually. Oil is really good for your wood cutting board, so I tend to do it on my cutting board for this reason. Sometimes you spill a little bit and it's no big deal. And that's a tip, if you didn't know that, okay, oil is very nourishing to a wooden cutting board. It makes it last longer. So now I'm gonna put this back on and you have a nice oil spray. I'm gonna show you, see? Spray super easy. On my fish, I'm gonna spray the oil. You do need to add some. One of the best things about this technique is that you don't have to use like a vegetable oil, which some people think is inflammatory. So you can use grapeseed oil or even olive oil to do this. I'm gonna preheat my air fryer to 400 degrees. I'm gonna let it preheat for just about two minutes. My air fryer is done preheating. I'm gonna take the fish fillets and I'm gonna take the side we sprayed with oil and I'm gonna put that side down. While they're in the air fryer basket, I can spray the other side. Okay, so I'm going to put this at 400 for 10 minutes. It's six minutes into the cook time and I am going to just spray oil on any dry spots. Like if you look here, this spot is a little bit dry. Just a tiny amount is fine. Now at this point, this is when you could flip it, but my flounder is so tender. Flounder, flounder fillets to me are just so tender. I just don't tend to flip it, which is why I preheat the bottom because by the bottom being hot, that helps the underside get crispy. But if you have like sway, you should definitely flip it. Or catfish, those are sturdy. They're not gonna cause any issue. But I'll put it back in. 
it's been 10 minutes and y'all look at this fish y'all know this looks so good y'all okay y'all look at this all right this look good okay tell me this look good because it don't look bad to me all right especially since we didn't do no deep frying look it got a little crispy coating you hear that that's not bad especially these edges now i know some of y'all gonna say girl i gotta have my hard fried deep fried look now look now if you gotta have it hard fried this ain't the one for you i said it's crispy and it is indeed crispy. It do got a coating on it. Might be a little hard to hear, but it does. Now, I know some of y'all are like, girl, okay, it look pretty good. But do it taste good, okay? Because if it don't taste good, I'm not about to make it. I'm I ain't about to give up that deep frying. Okay, let's find out. And that's the back side. Mmm. Mmm, 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 mmm. This is so good. I'm going to add a little bit of lemon. Mm. y'all this is delicious mm. Mm. all right y'all that's it let me know if you try this recipe and how it turns out for you okay because i think this is going to be a hit okay guys i'll see you next time at kamira's kitchen god bless and goodbye